Hello class, um, my name is Jada Robertson. I'm back again with the second part of my lesson about the birds of prey. Um, again, it can be found on page 184 in our Project Wild book. And these are, this is the objective that I've written for the second part of the lesson. Students will learn and interpret terms associated with the birds of prey lesson. So I went over the background information on the first part of the video, and then I also introduced the terms. Now I'm going to go into detail with the terms. So estivation, it means dormancy, similar to hibernation, typically during hot or dry periods. So in the Birds of Prey lesson, we learned that the Paiute ground squirrels go into estivation. When the temperatures get too hot during the summer season, they go down into the ground and they do their summer sleep. Um, population. This is the number of particular species in a defined area. Defined area. So with um, population in certain areas, like in our lesson that we learned, we found that there was a very high population of peri falcons. And there was also a large population of Paiute ground squirrels. And because of this population of ground squirrels, the peri falcons were able to have a stable source of food for a short period of time. So hypothesis is an educated prediction, part of a scientific experiment. So in our lesson, we found that a hypothesis was made that the temperature would rise from five to nine degrees Fahrenheit and that was based on the educated guess or the hypothesis that if us as humans kept emitting off the same amount of greenhouse gases that we emit, that that temperature would rise by the time we see 2029. So that's the educated guess or hypothesis. Um, the prediction, a statement foretelling likely outcomes of the basis of observation and reasoning. So also in the lesson, we found that there was a model on the climate that was created. And this model, it showed that the winter precipitation would increase, but the summer pre precipitation would decrease which means that would make the area a lot drier in the summertime. So the conditions would probably be way different than they are right now. Um, so interdependence. When different species within an ecosystem rely upon one another for survival. So interdependence was quite obvious in this particular um, lesson that we've learned. We learned that uh, Paiute ground squirrels are the main source of food for the peri falcons, and the peri falcons had to end up moving to another area once the Paiute ground squirrels went into their summer hibernation or estivation. So the peri falcons relied on them for food and because they couldn't get the food that they needed in order to survive, they ended up migrating to other areas. Um, ecological systems. So this is involving the interactions between a community of living organisms and a particular area, area in its non-living environment. So, there was um, temperature that was an issue. 
So all of these things um, pretty much interacted with each other. So because of the temperature, you see a moving of different animals. So that has to do with the interaction between the community of living and the non-living environment. Abiotic. So a non-living factor in an environment. So for our abiotic um, factor, we saw temperature to be the example, but it also could be light, water, and things like that. So our biotic um, term is the living organisms in a given community, including all plants and animals, life within the community. So our two obvious biotic factors that we learned about were the Paiute ground squirrels and the peri falcons. So these are the terms that we learned throughout the lesson and I just wanted to give you all a review and a little bit more detail about these terms. And again, I will see you guys all on Monday for the next part of the lesson. Thank you. Bye-bye.